one. Hello, welcome to Jenkins Docs Office Hours. Today is April 4th, and this is the EU-US edition. Uh, today we have myself, Kevin Martins, Bruno Varashtin, uh, Akash Mishra, and uh, Mark Waite, who will likely be joining us um, as we go. And anyone else who comes in, we'll welcome them as always, uh, and join in the community. Uh, for the agenda today, I've got the uh, next LTS release for April 17th, the latest weekly release, uh, another blog, po uh, blog post from Chris Stern regarding GSOC status and the application period, uh, some updates for the contributor spotlight, quick note on the Jenkins Community Awards, uh, some notes on Google Summer of Code and where things are at. Uh, there were some updates for the version docs project last week in Asia docs office hours. So we'll discuss that a little bit further here today. Um, there is mention of a demo in there, but that depends on whether or not uh, Chris or Vandit shows up. If they do, we'll you know see from there, but we won't um, rest on that one. Uh, just an update on Docker Compose in the documentation and tutorials. And then two new topics for discussion, uh, the idea of a technical review or a technical validation for pull requests coming into Jenkins.io and documenting pipeline libraries with Markdown or plain text or HTML. Uh, and so the last topic is Mark's. So uh, we'll make sure to discuss that with him. Uh, the technical review one is something that I put on there so I can speak to that fully in that sense. Is there any other topics that we'd like to have on the agenda for today or does that cover everything that uh, everyone had on mind to talk about? Okay, and welcome, Mark. Thanks for joining. I'm just uh, finished going over the agenda and pointing out some of the new topics. So, um, is there anything else that you'd like to have on here? Uh, we did. I did make sure to mention the documenting pipeline libraries uh, topic here, but uh, anything else that needs to be on there, Mark? Okay, cool. So, starting off, so uh, our next LTS release is going to be April seventeenth, twenty twenty four, and that'll be LTS two point four four zero point three. Uh, I've created the change log and upgrade guide pull request, so that can be viewed and reviewed here. Um, thanks to anyone and everyone that uh, takes time to do so. Um, and just for the record, so the backporting ticket has been created. Uh, however, the release candidate isn't ready just yet, uh, and the backport PR has not been fully approved and merged as of yet. Uh, there was one entry that was postponed on the backporting PR, so I actually just submitted a commit to my pull request to uh, to reflect that aspect of it. Um, the other five are still valid in the fixed category. So those are remaining and I will put this one back if that ends up making it into the LTS. Uh, and then um, we also had the weekly 2.452 built and delivered successfully this past this week. Uh, and it's actually the current front runner for next LTS baseline selection. Um, and it's uh, actually been discussed in the developer mailing list already. Uh, Mark started this discussion earlier this week. Alex Brandes and Bezel Crow have also said plus one for them. So things are looking up. Uh, and based on the change log and the, um, the, the community reports, uh, there haven't been any. So everything looks really, really good for the last handful of releases. This one just happens to include a few things that we want to make sure are part of the next LTS. So. Uh, yeah, if you have any concerns, questions, or thoughts on that, please add to the discussion in the developer mailing list. Um, and if you're not part of the developer mailing list, you can always uh, get on that via the Jenkins website, and there's uh, ways to get in contact. Uh, next up, so Chris Stern has submitted a blog post just to uh, go over and cover the GSOC application period closing. Um, so that closed on April 2nd, and Chris has submitted a pull request uh, for a blog post just going over where we're at with that, what things we're looking for, what the process has been like, and where we're looking to go next. Um, Bruno and Jean-Marc Mason have already reviewed that, provided some feedback. I still need to go through and review it. Um, a lot of the suggestions that I would have probably made have already been made, so uh, I'm gonna do a real nice uh, deep dive on that one, make sure everything else looks good. Um, but thanks to Chris Stern for their constant work on this, for the, their leadership on the GSOC uh, uh, partnership and everything else. Uh, next, after that, we have the contributor spotlight. So uh, Bruno had his spotlight published uh, uh, last week. And then uh, Hervé Lemire is going to be the next featured contributor on the spotlight. So his pull request has been submitted. 
Uh, just looking to have him review that at this point. Bruno's, are, Bruno's reviewed it as well. Uh, and a couple of other folks have done their review on that for me. So that's great. Uh, and then once we publish Erebe, Mark Wade will be next up after that. Uh, and then we'll go from there. We'll finish off from there uh, for the time being. And then we still have to look at the top contributors and see uh, who else we might be able to reach out for further spotlighting. Um, some folks have stepped away or just declined to be part of that process. And that's more than okay. That's their prerogative. So uh, we're respecting that. Well, but if anyone does want to share their story and have that uh, spotlight shown on them, we want to be make sure that we're part of that and having those conversations. Uh, and so I'll partner up with Alyssa and John Mark to see what kind of data we have and who we can reach out to on that front. For the Jenkins Community Awards, that voting period has concluded. Uh, everything's done now with the CDF awards for Jenkins and the CDF overall and the other projects. Uh, so everything's been notified, sent in, com completed, and winners will be announced at, at April 15th or the at CDCon, which is the week of April 15th in Seattle. Um, so good luck to everyone who has been nominated and was uh, up for nomination. And thanks to everyone who voted and participated in the process. Uh, next up, we have Google Summer of Code. So things are moving uh, well on there. Um, the application deadline just passed us on April 2nd. Uh, so we've got something around uh, 75 valid applications, which is great, uh, and 40 or so uh, good, propo good proposals, or at least uh, draft proposals for a GSOC project. Um, so lots of participation, lots of great work being done. And so uh, the, the org admins and mentors have been reviewing projects and will uh, be submitting what they end up deciding upon or having a unison for in terms of the ratings. Uh, and then that process essentially is we submit the projects that we think will be successful and uh, be a good experience for not just uh, Jenkins, but the GSOC participants and the whole process as a whole. Uh, and then if Google approves, we'll find out from them and continue forward with those projects. Um, we're really excited about this. Uh, there's been a lot of great uh, activity in the Gitter channels and the matrix channels, whatever you want to call them, uh, between Chris, Bruno, other org admins, and the potential participants. It's just really great to see uh, and really heartening to know that people are really excited and, and uh, gearing up for this. Uh, is there any other notes on Google Summer of Code that we should mention or anything that is a highlight that we want to share? Uh, not really. In fact, I know for a fact that we, as mentors, have to finish our grading by April the 19th, but I don't remember of <laughs> the next milestones. Um, I think it's a week after April the 19th that we ha will have to uh, tell to Google which one we would like to be selected, but then I just can't remember <laughs> when Google will um, answer, say, okay, you have two, three, four, I don't know how many projects that they will fund for us. So I don't know. Um, yes, we'll see. <laughs> there is no emergency for the time being. We still have a few docs office hours before I know my numbers and my stones. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Bruno. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, usually the timelines uh, in the May areas when the community engagement and uh, re re uh, rapport building starts to happen. So uh, we'll know sooner yes, than later right. for sure. And yeah. Uh, you know, and that'll kick off. So great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, so we have the version docs project. So um, this took, this had to take a backseat for a little bit just because the infrastructure team was working on uh, getting the cloud costs uh, under control a bit. Um, from there were, they were a little bit higher than we wanted them to be. So that was priority number one. Uh, the Infra team has since gotten a lot of that under control and is a much, much better situation than we were in. Uh, so this now gives us the opportunity to have the version docs site uh, project come back into the fold of what's being worked on. Uh, so uh, right now, there is plan uh, for the, data, the update center move to be completed by April 30th. Um, that's, again, the highest priority is making sure the cloud costs are covered. Uh, and then once that's taken care of, we'll get back to this. 
uh, Von Deet and Chris Stern have been working on this uh, consistently and making sure that everything looks good. I've been reviewing things as I as they come up and come along to make sure that there's no orphan pages, that navigation works. Uh, and we were able to meet with uh, Daniel Beck as part of the security team to make sure that their uh, advisories process is not interrupted or um, imposed upon in a negative way. So uh, great news there. We had a really great session and I think we came out of it with a really positive outlook for the version doc site from um, you know, our internal and infrastructure perspective, but also from a security perspective. Uh, Daniel Beck was very satisfied hearing that it'll uh, work a little bit faster and be a little bit more secure in that sense. So uh, really great stuff there. Uh, I still need to do a little bit more detailed review on some other things uh, before we finish up. Um, but I've gone through a lot of the installation, uh, the installation docs and a lot of the uh, just different sections there. So uh, not too much more, ju just the things that I forgot to check out or stuff like the developer docs that uh, may not have been first pass. So more to come on that. And it does not appear that uh, Van Dieter Chris has joined us this time. So uh, there won't be a demo this week, uh, at least during our session. Uh, there may still be a demo later on at Asia Docs office hours, which uh, there will be a same, the video recording and everything will be available afterwards. So you can always check that out uh, and include it here as well. So more to come on that uh, in due time. Uh, next up, so this is an update for the Docker Compose uh, tutorials that have been worked on and completed and submitted and merged by Bruno. Uh, there was a recent fix introduced in uh, Docker Compose version 2.24.7 uh, that rendered the existing Docker Compose YAML invalid. Uh, Bruno's already been on top of this. He's created uh, a couple PRs that are designed to fix the issue. Uh, and they're currently, I think one's in draft mode. I don't know if the other one's in draft mode still, but uh, they'll need review and, and uh, everything prior to being able to be merged. Um, but it does need, uh, does require or uh, it's best practice that they be merged at almost the exact same time so that there's no uh, instances between the two being merged. Uh, Bruno, any insights, notes, anything you want to share on that stuff? Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Um, what I saw earlier is that 40 people forked the repo, which is not necessary to run the examples, but that means that some people try to use it even to modify it. I don't have the numbers when it comes to you know how many clones were made. But for me, that's an indication that people are trying our tutorials. And that's a good sign. Um, and more than that, there's two, uh, I think it was two, Mark could tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, two people just declared, created an issue as saying that it was not working for them anymore. So some people are using it and even are reporting some issues. So I'm happy <laughs> about this situation. What I'm not happy about is, of course, that it doesn't work anymore. That's why I created those draft PRs. The thing is, we were using a functionality. I don't know if that's... It's not really a bug. It's a functionality that was poorly documented or not documented at all. So we were really at the border of something working almost by accident. And then somebody proposed a fix in Docker Compose 2.4.27. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, our work uh, couldn't make it anymore. So yeah, that's a bummer. So I had to we work our existing Docker Compose file and work with profiles. We were already declaring profiles in the preceding version of the Docker Compose file, but not really using them. So this time we have to use the profile extensively. So my proof of concept does work, but I may have over-engineered <laughs> this. I had a discussion with Damien earlier today. Thank you, Damien, for the insight, by the way. And it told me that I did something that was maybe too complicated for the goal we have, just having something that works. So I will simplify uh, my proposal and get the PR out of draft, um, maybe tomorrow, hopefully, so that we can then merge uh, after a sort of review the PR regarding the code itself and then the tutorials. As for the documentation, the tutorial themselves, Frankly, there is not much that has changed. The um, command has gone from Docker Compose up uh, minus the Maven to Docker Compose minus minus profile Maven up. 
So that's still easy uh, to get it to work. And I think that's all I had to say. Mark, would you have any remark, comment, or question about that? I was just curious on Damien's observations about complexity. Was this is he is he not okay with the use of of profile or is oh no not at all he's okay oh. with the use of profile the thing is I have some kind of uh, new sidekick Docker container that tries to trick um, Jcask and uh, Jenkins controller to restart with a generate with a on the fly generated uh, Jcask token and it could work. It does work sometimes, but not all the time. And frankly, it's not really a problem. The thing that was bothering me is that if we don't do that, we have to declare in the Docker Compose file a token uh, that will be used by Jcask to, no, by the controller to restart the Jcask import file. And I did not like that. I didn't want to have anything hard coded in the Docker Compose file. But Damien said, oh, it's okay. Uh, you know, it's not production. Uh, so you can, of course, use a uh, hard-coded token for that kind of work. And frankly, what would you prefer? Having something that is generated on the fly, but this is setting to restart your Jenkins controller, or just something that is hard-coded, but that will allow to restart only the Jcask import. Say, okay, I'll go with the hard-coded string. That's what I call the over-engineered, over-complicated, because there are a lot of it. steps. Yeah. Okay, it, it's... You you adopted a more general solution than Damien and Damien said, hey, it doesn't have to be that general because if we make it very specific, it's much simpler. Yes. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, Bruno. I really appreciate all the Welcome. insight you've shared and clarity. Thank you. So next up are a couple of newer topics for us. So uh, first is technical review and validation for pull requests. This is something that uh, I've recently been discussing with Mark and uh, bringing up. Um, so when it comes to pull requests coming into uh, Jenkins.io, uh, I am first and foremost a documentation uh, person, not necessarily a developer. So some of the more technical aspects and code are a little lost on me when it comes to testing or trying to verify. Um, so, uh, what my idea was that we have, uh, we reach out to the community and first of all, see if anyone is willing or able to, uh, provide assistance in this area. Um, and so the idea is that we'll find people that are willing to help and, uh, okay with me reaching out or, ta or tagging them for review. And it would be strictly technical, con technical review and validation. Um, again, things like code blocks, configuration settings, uh, things that I'm just not necessarily doing on a regular basis, uh, plugin development, things of that nature. Um, there's been a few, there's been a handful of submissions uh, to the developer documentation specifically that has uh, kind of pushed it a little bit further in my mind. Um, I don't wanna create any issues and I don't wanna, I don't feel comfortable submitting anything or merging anything that I'm not 100% sure of. And so this is an effort to make sure that the documentation or any content that is submitted to Jenkins.io is uh, correct and validated by someone that knows. Um, we have migrated previously from the wiki to now Jenkins.io. Uh, and I want to keep up the quality of documentation and content that we're putting on this uh, Jenkins.io. Um, the wiki was a little bit more wild west in that anyone could submit uh, pull requests. And so uh, I don't want to remove, I don't want to raise the barrier for entry or make it harder for anyone to contribute. Uh, but I want the contributions to uh, be correct, valid, and so that we're not um, creating misinformation or I'm not putting anything to the documentation that should not be there. Um, there's no expectations of urgency or immediacy with any of this. It's something that can be done when the person has free time or has space and capacity available to take a look at that. It's not something that would be done as a first pass. Uh, I'm still gonna be doing my normal documentation review. I'm still gonna be testing everything as much as I can and getting to a point where uh, I actually have exhausted everything that I know or just can't anymore. Uh, and at that point in time and only that point in time would I be looking for uh, further assistance and validation on this. Um, regular documentation reviews, things that I can take care of myself, things that are not as involved or um, as beyond my skill set, I'm, I'm gonna handle. 
but when it comes to something where there is a configuration file that needs to be set up and I'm just not familiar with that process or like what should and should not be there, asking for another set of eyes, someone that has experience with that and something that I would imagine or would hope could be, you know, realized a lot sooner than if I were trying to figure it out. Um, it sh it's not something that we want to have anyone take a lot of time for. It's something that uh, you would ideally be, you know, 20, 30 minutes at most um, to take a look at this and review. Uh, not anything like coaching or providing a lot of like back and forth conversation with the contributors. I'm more than happy to take that, the lead on that. Um, even if it's, you know, providing those suggestions and feedback myself, even uh, directly, if I can sit down with someone and they can show me what's going on here or explain what's wrong, um, that's going to help me grow. That's going to help me learn better uh, and be a lot more confident in just these uh, reviews. So um, there's no uh, idea of commitment. There's no uh, one person that we want to rely on either. I would love for this to be multiple people so that um, I can just reach out. And if someone sees that someone else is already looking at it or has done the review, they don't even need to worry about it um, because that's not fair. That's not what we're looking for. And um, yeah, ultimately, this is more uh, to make the experience and the process just a little bit smoother overall um, and make sure that contributors are putting in the work that they are doing, but making sure that we're not or that I'm not uh, merging anything that shouldn't be merged. All that being said, uh, Mark, Bruno, thoughts, feelings, concerns, questions, anything like that on this? Yeah, so I think it's a good idea. We've already got a, a first step, thanks to the work that was done to recently add more people to copy editors uh, and and to the docs team. So yeah, I think that, that's good. Now, the, the catalyst for me that I, I like that you, you've done this, Kevin, because there was a pull request submitted that was proposing to change the release, the reverse proxy instructions for Linux IP tables. And the thing that the author submitted just didn't work. But in order to test it, you had to know Linux IP tables well enough to diagnose, to see what's happening, to watch it fail, et cetera. And, and that's not, not a common set of skills. Yeah. And it's, and it's, um, it's something that, like I said, it's a newer contributor that's trying to be part of the project. We want that to happen. That's not something we want to take away or, or like I said, put a barrier up. Um, so if I don't know that, but I can say, Hey, if someone happens to know about this and you have five minutes, could you take a look and just like confirm, deny whether or not that's the case. Mm -hmm. That's really like the best case scenario. It's something quick and easy that someone who knows could look at and say yes or no. Um, obviously, yes. if it's a little bit more complicated, it might take a little bit more, but. You know, yeah, I, I think feel. I think you're optimistic that that it won't take long. The The IP tables thing was relatively few few commands to be tested, but getting to the point where I could test it was easily 30 or 40 minutes. But even even that, better to have spent the 30 to 40 minutes than to have published something that simply does not work. Yeah. And that also makes me think of a PR we got earlier this week regarding uh, Maven settings.xml. And I think that what was proposed was not working or not necessary. And frankly, if you don't test it, if you don't have the machine that could... Yeah, you have to do it. You have to test it. You just can't say, oh, that will work because you don't have the compiler or whatever in your head. You have to test it. So yes, it's a very good idea to have a set of people able to help with maybe more technical things. You have to get your hands dirty. Well, and, and on that, that Maven setting that you noted, I think we actually already have a page that describes the Maven settings. And so it may be that what we ought to do is deduplicate that page mm -hmm. so that we get a copy of it that we can reuse in multiple locations. I, I was surprised when I discovered the the other page, the existing page that describes settings.xml because I didn't know we had one. And, <laughs> and that way, if it's wrong, we fix it in one place and it appears yeah. correctly in multiple locations. So yeah, good insight. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, Bruno. And thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. 
Um, so yeah, so we're going to continue having that conversation and looking uh, to see if anyone who else would be uh, open to joining that. Um, we've already had a couple of people uh, added to the team, as Mark said, thanks to the Infra team for all their help with getting those permissions set up and adding the members to the team. Uh, next up on new topics, so uh, documenting pipeline libraries with Markdown or plain text or HTML. Uh, and so uh, Mark added this topic, but uh, Marcus Winter had proposed this in a pull request to support Markdown for pipeline library documentation here. Uh, and yeah, I'll bring that up. But uh, Mark, if you would want to kind of just describe what's going on here, the idea Marcus had and whatnot. Yeah, so so. I like so what Marcus was suggesting is that when someone creates a pipeline library, and we have a, a very good example of that on ci.jenkins.io, where every plugin and actually a number of other components have a, a very small uh, Jenkins file. It's build plugin with a few few arguments, and all the heavy lifting is done in this shared this pipeline shared library. The documentation for that pipeline shared library is written in HTML or in plain text. And HTML and plain text are workable, but most of us are now comfortable writing things in Markdown. And what, Von, what Marcus is suggesting is, hey, let's allow pipeline libraries to be documented with Markdown. And so I think it's an interesting idea, and I test drove it. I, I am a maintainer of the Markdown plugin. So I ins the Markdown plugin is already installed on my Jenkins controller. And I modified the pipeline documentation for the pipeline library used by ci.jenkins.io in my private fork, right? So, or in my, my fork, it's not private, but in my fork on this, my own master branch. And you see that the changes aren't really dramatic. It's not a huge bunch of changes. Instead of href, it uses markdown style syntax for hyperlinks. Uh, the asterisks in the list were, I think, already being interpreted correctly by, by the, I, I'm not entirely sure on that one. So in this case, this one may have been be much better now because HTML would not have interpreted the asterisks correctly and and so there is there is a real improvement here by switching to use markdown uh the the simplification but the problem is it would require that we install the markdown formatter plugin on the jenkins controller and that means persuading the infra team that markdown formatter plugin is not a threat to the stability of ci.jenkins.io and and that's a valid valid concern from them because they have to provide CI services for thousands of plugins, right? For Jenkins Core, for Jenkins documentation, for all sorts of other things. So yeah, I'll I'll start the uh, conversations with the infra team and with others, and we'll see where it goes. Great, thank you very much, Mark. I really appreciate all that. Uh, explanation and context. Um, I just linked the, since you mentioned it in the Jenkins Infra channel on uh, Gitter, I just thought I'd throw that link in there as well, since that idea, like you said, the idea is being brought to all the other areas of Jenkins. So, mm -hmm. fantastic. Thank you very much. And then the last item here, um, I think we, we talked about this in the technical validation, um, but uh, we got some new members fitted onto the docs team, the wiki docs team, the docs team in infra, and the copy editors team. Um, so thanks to Hervé, Tim Jacome, the infra team for all the work on that and getting that sorted uh, a little bit better. Um, that also involved removing older members that are no longer participating in that sense. So uh, just a nice little spring cleaning for that. Well, and um, and that's one where we we generally don't want to make changes to that repository, right? Changing the the archival copy of documentation is really a bad pattern. However, um, in this case, we had a plugin whose documentation was in Markdown or no, in the wiki. We needed to mark that plugin as deprecated, and we didn't want to release a new version of the plugin just to declare it deprecated. So by editing the files on the wiki archive, we were able to mark it as deprecated. So uh, 
if you're willing to open, you can see the result of this change on plugins.jenkins.io. And there, look for the word peg down, P-E-G-D-O-W-N. Yeah, hit control F5, it's caching itself. You're seeing the same thing I did, and I'm I'm not entirely sure what's... Yeah. Well, uh, let's make it easier. Just put on the end of the URL, slash, yeah. slash peg down, P-E-G-D-O-W-N, yeah. dash formatter. Oh, okay. That's that's probably fine too. Now, if you if you search again, there we go. Yeah. So this note here, that note actually was added automatically by the generation. The thing that had to be changed is below the bar, below the documentation button, where it says "peg down formatter plugin deprecated." That piece did not exist previously. Got it. Okay, and now it great. does, and it includes a link to the Markdown Formatter plugin that is not deprecated. So when we deprecate a plugin, we really like to tell people, go here instead. And that's mm -hmm. what this is doing, is I had to insert a, a way to tell people, go here instead. Right, right. And then now we have the link to the Markdown Formatter plugin. Right. Great. Neat. Cool. Well, that's a neat, new little trick. Thank you very much, Mark. And that's it for me. Great. And that's it for the agenda as well. We're a couple minutes past time, but thank you very much for sticking around. Uh, we're under recording in just a moment. It'll be available in 24 to 48 hours. And as always, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you next week. Thank you as always. Thanks. Thank you.